What's up Guardians, Gold Magikarp here, bringing you yet another guide on how to tackle the GMs this season. This week you're able to pick any of the six Nightfalls, which means you can finally attempt the Glassway GM again. This strike is definitely the hardest GM this season, and I would take it a step further and say it's the hardest in the game. Glassway is not one to speed run and you have 45 minutes, so take your time. For our team compilation, we ran three Shadebinders with Bleak Watcher to freeze anything inside. The stasis turrets are definitely the most broken thing in the game at the moment, so why not have three? We were running Verity's Brow, not for the grenade damage buff, but to feed allies grenade regen when you throw your nade. But you could also have one person get away with running Aeon Soul, as heavy ammo is always a welcome thing, especially since you need a lot for this strike. Just make sure you're using Sect of Insight. This is our team compilation, but don't let that stop you from bringing a well or a banner shield, or anything else you see fit. But I highly advise running at least two shade binders. Let's talk about what weapons you should bring. In this Nightfall, there are anti-barriers and overload champions. So scouts and hand cannons are your go-to for your primary. Just make sure you're not all bringing scouts for example, unless you're using both primaries which is visible. There are no void shields in this Nightfall, so keep that in mind when selecting your weapons. For special, I've seen people bring Wither Horde, which works great with Breach and Clear, and the fact that you can shoot the boss's shield and still damage him with a Blight. But I advise running at least one Blinding Nade Grenade Launcher, and make it the empty vessel if you're lucky enough to get a good roll. Or like I said before, don't bring a special, and run both the Hand Cannon and a Scout. To no one's shock, Anarchy is again the best heavy. If you don't have it, you can bring Xenophage or a Solar Rocket if you're the one using Wither Horde. It's just really hard to compete with Anarchy at the moment due to Breach and Clear and how broken it is. Now for your armor mods. It's really up to you if you want to run a Warmind Cell build or a Charge of Light build. You could even mix it up and run both Warmind Protection and Protective Light if you're doing charges and your teammate is doing Warmind Cells for example. As long as you're getting a consistent way of getting charges or warmind cells, you'll be alright. And make sure you're running the correct ammo finder, scavenger and reserves. Speaking of reserves, you may instead want to consider sniper resistance, or even better arc resistance, to stop snipers one-shotting you. And you also may want to consider concussive dampener to help reduce splash damage, which there is a lot in this nightfall. These mods are underrated and really help you survive the onslaught. Alright, now you have your loadout, let's get into the thicker things. If you want to play the pro sweaty strat, and you're okay with waiting, you can watch the Europa map until the flag shows up on the right side. Then when you launch, and you go to the flag, you'll have a super straight away. This isn't necessary, but this is Grandmaster Glassway, so you'll need everything to survive this wild ride. Sparrow your way to the first room. On the left there will be some invisible marauders and an overload champion. I find the safest way to kill any overload champion is to freeze him with your stasis turret or super while loading anarchy onto him then spamming your overload hand cannon on them. But yeah, you do you. There's going to be some shanks that don't give you too much trouble and two sniper vandals which can one shot you if you're not resistant so play safe. When you jump to this island with a big rock, ads will spawn in. Just sit back and take him out. For the next room, I like to throw a stasis turret and blind the wretches on the right first. And once they're down, focus the overload captain. If you aren't sitting up here when the overload captain dies, or you push in too far, a barrier servitor will show up with another wave. When they do, focus the barrier servitor and lesser drag is pushing you. There are a lot of nades in this room, and if you don't have concussive dampener, we'll one shot you. So keep your eyes out. In the next room, the first thing you want to take out is the three Vandal Snipers hanging out on the right side of the room. Or we'll sit back here in the tunnel, add a range of them and just ignore them for now. If you have a chance to get the overload, hit him hard and fast. If not, aim the boss. If you have a super, clear out whatever you can while also damaging the boss. Once the boss and the adds are dead, move up a little and more adds spawn. Quickly retreat or super. Clear out whatever you want first, as long as you work together to take down the barrier servitor. Once the room is clear, move forward to the next one. I like to sit back here, behind this rock, and clear out whatever I can, prioritizing vandal snipers and shanks. Just watch out for adds that like to push you from the right. When you take him down, you have more room to work the overload captain and the boss. It's up to you which you target first. But no, while the boss is tanky, he doesn't reach any health, so keep that in mind. Remember, supers are the best thing to spam in this nightfall, so don't just hang on to them forever. 
After you take him down, move up and then back again to spawn in the next wave. There will be a barrier servitor to take down and some adds. Once they're down, push through and clear a couple of dregs and avoid the Vex mill. The next room is the only relaxing part of this strike, but you still have to watch out for sniper vandals. I like to work the ads from the entrance so nothing is actually shooting at me. After you clear the first wave, I head to the left while I wait for my teammate to jump up on the right side. I suggest throwing a stasis turret down here to the left and working down the right sniper vandal that spawns at this location before shooting the now frozen snipers on the left where your turret is. I suggest letting two members of your fire team shoot down the overload on the right side while one of your team heads in from the left to shoot the vandals across the gap. When the overload is dead, you can now jump across the gap. This will spawn in more ads. Oh, and don't forget vandals drop mines, which you can shoot out. When you head across, be careful of the two sniper vandals at the back of the room, which you can shoot down from the left where I am without them firing at you. Beware of the overload captain on the right side of the big box. He loves to teleport, so much in fact, he may teleport off the map. When they're all down, you can move on to the next room. This room can give you trouble, especially if you're just sitting on the plate. Ads here spawn in at different percentages, so once you hit a certain number, jump off the plate and hide behind these boxes. I'll tell you what spawns in and at what percentage in a sec. Just note to spam your stasis turrets and blinding nades and super if any get close. There are vandal snipers here too, so hit them as soon as possible. Oh, and there are solar shields here as well, so if you're running solar, be ready. Okay, jump on the plate, and when it hits 15%, get off and hide. Seven shanks and a heavy shank will spawn in on the left. Once they are cleared, you can jump on the plate again. Get the plate to 25%, then jump off. There will be seven shanks and a heavy shank again, but this time on the right side. Once they are cleared, jump on the plate again. When you hit 35%, there will be seven shanks and two vandal snipers on the left. Prioritize the snipers first, before the shanks. You can throw a stasis turret to keep the shanks at bay while you deal with the snipers. Once they're cleared, jump on the plate again. When you hit 55%, it will be the same thing but on the right side. Seven shanks and two vandals. Prioritize the snipers again before the shanks. And once cleared, jump on the plate again. When you hit 75% and 85%, there will be two waves of four shanks, four exploding shanks, and two sniper shanks. Prioritize the snipers first or exploding if they're close, as they will push into you and explode. Again, supers, stasis turrets, and blinding nades are all good things here. Once the plate is complete, look down and clear out whatever you can. There will be an overload captain down there. When you drop down to the bottom level, another wave spawns in, but make sure not to push in too far. I use that flag on the right as a reference, or a third wave will spawn in. The third wave has a barrier servitor and four vandal snipers. Two on each side that sit high along the wall, which will eventually jump down to the back platform after some time. So if you want an easy time, just play it slow and clear out whatever you can before moving up. Like I said before, you have plenty of time. Alright, you made it to the boss room. It's been pretty simple up until now, but this is where the challenge begins. This is definitely the part that will make or break your team, unless you and your fire team know what you're doing. I've noticed the difference to winning and losing this fight is a matter of timing, knowing how the enemies work, and working together on the same page while prioritizing which targets to aim. So I'll be as clear as possible on where you want to be and what you're prioritizing. Let's get into the fight. Start by clearing out the dregs and the overload captain. This will spawn the bosses in. Yes, that means two. A big one that hangs outside and a little one that pushes you while you're inside the rooms. Head to the left room. You want to stay inside the left room for most of this fight. I know the little boss will be in there with you, but he's really not that hard to avoid. Occasionally, you can peek out the left door of the left room to shoot down at some ads at the left portal as they spawn in. Just note, if you see the big boss coming around the corner, dip back inside. Wait in the left room for the first overload minotaur to show up. Have each of your fire team watching one of the three doors, which I call left door, middle door, right door, as the minotaurs can push you through any of those doors. The little boss will be pushing you through the middle door. He moves at the speed of a snail, so just ignore him on the most part until the second overload minotaur is dead. There is a big pillar in the middle of the room, which splits the room into two sections, an open area and a staircase. Just hang out on whatever side the little boss isn't, and you'll be fine. It's a lot easier than clearing him and dealing with four overload minotaurs. 
These overload minotaurs are definitely the hardest part of the GM. And I find the best way to dealing with them is to freeze them right away with your stasis turret or super if both minotaurs are on you. Then shoot it twice with anarchy from all three players or spamming your hand cannon to keep it overloaded. If you're unaware, every time a champion is frozen, his abilities and stagger are resetted. But if they're frozen, they can't damage you. Once you kill the two Minotaurs, you can now damage the boss down a third of his health. Unfortunately, this spawns in two more Overload Minotaurs. Note, the Overloads spawn in before the boss leaves, but you have plenty of time to force him out before the Minotaurs are on you again. When the second set of Minotaurs are down, burn down the big boss a third of his health. Unfortunately, he is a tank and will chew up some of your time. When he disappears, head to the left door of the left room and anarchy the wyvern that comes out of the left portal. If you don't do this, you have two wyverns pushing you at the same time. Wyverns here suck, as if they get close to you, they'll teleport behind you and one-shot you. At the same time, the second wyvern is pushing you, the little boss is as well. Which when you get him down another third of his health, after dealing with the two wyverns, two more wyverns spawn in. After dealing with those wyverns, there will be four sniper hog goblin champions around outside the room. Work down the champions as a team, remembering to play it slow. There will be one barrier sniper that will push you inside, so keep an eye out and be ready for him. Once the four champions are down, the boss spawns back, as well as two more overload minotaurs. That again will push you from either of the three doors, so make sure you're all watching them. When those overload minotaurs are down, damage the big boss to about halfway, and two more overloads will spawn. Do the same thing as before, watching for which way they are coming in from, and remembering to freeze them. If someone dies during the fight, you can use your super to freeze everything around them while you revive them. That's just a little tip. When the second set of Minotaurs are down, damage the big boss again to a third of his health and he'll disappear for a short time before the little boss, big boss and two more wyverns spawn in. If you can kill the wyvern at the left portal straight away, do so. If you see the big boss pushing you, head inside to take out the wyverns. Then damage down the little boss afterwards. Note, you may be getting a little low and heavy at this time after all those overloads and barriers, so you can always primary dump the little boss and save your heavy for the second set of wyverns. When the little boss dies, two more wyverns spawn in and push you. If you got a super here, just use it. These are the last two major threats. If you don't have a super, drop your turret, use your heavy and burn them down while watching out for their teleport. Now you've done the hard part, it's time to play it cool. It's just the boss and four barrier champions left outside. If you can't reach the barrier champions because the big boss is drilling you, you can get one player to force the boss to the left or right by standing on that side and shooting at him while the other two work down the barriers. This also works if you can't get to a revive because the boss is there. Once you have all four barrier champions down, shoot down the boss and you've done it. Well that's it Guardians, hopefully this video made this nightmare of a nightfall more bearable for you. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you like Destiny content, make sure to comment, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. This is Gold Magic Cup, signing out. Blip blip blip.